R is for Rape, Part 1, The Pen and the Sword. I've written a lot about rape over the years, so I'm going to draw from some of my old articles and add some new material to the following. My plan is to make this a three-part post addressing the trickier and more guaranteed to offend aspects of rape as follows. Part 1. Here, I'll talk about the effective partnership between language and violence and how men have used both as weapons to keep safety and justice out of the reach of women. Part 2. Here, I'll discuss the slippery definitions of sex, rape, and consent, and I'll delve into the scary concept of consensual rape. Part 3. Here, I'll continue to forego euphemisms and get into the world of modern slavery, rape visas, and rape tourism. Let me start with a simple statement, a simple truth. If men didn't exist, rape wouldn't exist. Let's think about that for a minute. I can hear all the background clamor that typically follows a truth statement such as this, not all men. Men can be raped, too. Women can be rapists, too. I'm just going to tune that out as so much noise and keep going because those protests are neither accurate nor useful and can derail feminist pursuits. As an example, I did a little survey on rape years ago, and to my dismay, I found that even staunch feminists who were regular readers of my blog didn't agree on what rape was, and were adamant supporters of men's rights, even if they wouldn't normally come out and say that. You have no foundation on which to build if people can't even agree on the basics. That is typically what happens with most of the feminisms, with the exception of gynocentrism, and why most feminists spend more time fighting each other instead of achieving things for females as a class. But it's not a surprise, despite the word having been around since the early 13th century. The word has changed meaning over the years, and it is still changing even today. I think the fact that it still doesn't have an agreed-upon definition is because men control language and because rape is a crime that only males commit and only females experience. To acknowledge the latter would would be to hold men accountable for what they do and are, and we can't have that. So let's dig into language a bit. Humans versus all other creatures. In considering the differences between humans and other mammals, or any creature for that matter, there are some significant differences that set us apart. And note that this is in no way a comment that humans are superior to animals, as I don't believe that for a second. Each species has its strengths and weaknesses, which makes hierarchy development a rather stupid and pointless endeavor. In considering humans, language and the capacity for deep and complex self-awareness set them apart from all other living things on Earth. Other creatures may have systems of communication and a limited ability to reflect on simple behaviors, but none rivals human capacity. That's not a judgment, it's just a fact. Dolphins, for example, don't conjugate verbs, and chimpanzees don't chronically and masochistically self-sabotage or even commit suicide over lack of purpose or meaning in life. Non-humans also don't develop systems of ethics or morality, even misguided, faulty ones. These are uniquely human achievements and are only three of many, many examples of the complexities of human language and self-awareness. Humans are also the only species capable of malice. Now note that I'm not talking about survival instincts. Men and silly women who defend men often argue that male violence is just a reflection of the instinct to survive and is comparable to the killing that any other species does. This is classic male logic designed specifically to try to justify violent male behavior. 
Some of my former Chinese male students in university would state without blinking in my class that we live in a jungle. Hmm. Well, now I do believe that males are naturally violent. They're wired for it. But as I've written before, as humans, we also have self-awareness. And it is this unique and incredible ability that allows humans to override violent impulses. But as humans are also uniquely malicious creatures, instincts and deliberate cruelty frequently play off each other. No creature other than the human male kills for pleasure, and no creature other than the human male tortures other living things. There is no evolutionary or survival purpose for killing, for pleasure, or for torturing. I've met a lot of men who try to argue with seriously twisted logic that there's a need for these things, and this is when I back away and wish I had a weapon at the ready in order to do like all other creatures do out of instinct, remove a dangerous threat to one's survival. But alas, human females are the only creatures on earth who are not allowed to defend themselves. <clears throat> and this is where language enters the scene. The role of language in power, control, and hierarchy. The pen is mightier than the sword. Language is one of humans' oldest tools, and like all tools, it can be a beautiful mechanism or system used to do wonderful things and inspire the best in all of us. But like all tools, it can also be used to destroy everything in its path. In the hands of men, language is frequently used to express male love and creativity, which, as most women eventually come to find out, are dangerous things and not at all what female love and creativity are. As human males have come to realize weapons alone will not get you sustainable power. Sure, you can overwhelm a perceived em enemy, but it's really difficult to maintain that victory for any period of time without a much more powerful weapon. And that weapon is language. Language is in fact a much more powerful weapon than any sword, but they work together. Just as it's hard to sustain control with only swords, it's also difficult to gain and keep power with only words. We've all heard that common description of successful evil dynamic duos, you have the brawn and I have the brains. Well, that is an apt description of the sword and the pen. Employ the brute force, overwhelm the enemy, enact the mindfuckery of the beautiful brutalized population that only language can achieve, for example, war is peace, freedom is slavery, ignorance is strength, and then all future brutality just becomes an accepted part of the system. Those few who see beyond the language mechanisms and refuse to believe have no leg to stand on and find themselves very much alone and often questioning their own sanity. Whoever controls language controls the world and the people who live in it. As a tool and building block of control and power, it is safe to say that if you aspire to megalomaniac status, you need to master language. I don't mean that you should learn to speak several languages. I mean you need to learn how to use language to manipulate people and situations and to obscure facts. You need to weaponize language. You need to see where language has its greatest influence. And I've discussed um, uh, centers of influence in my Oppressor Triangle post, which I'll link to below, but there are other arenas. Language has had the greatest influence in the areas of politics, law, economics, academia, and the healthcare system or industry. These areas don't function separately. There is much overlap. The language enacted in the political sphere can and does affect all other spheres of power, for example. And the question becomes, who controls language? And the answer is men. Men have always controlled language, and they control it as much today as they have in the past. 
It's not a race thing, as much as some people might wish it to be so. It's a male thing. If you're a big picture thinker, if you think internationally across time and place, and really you have to be if you ever hope to end oppression, you have to accept the truth that males control language, and as a result, they control everything. If you get bogged down on other group affiliations, you'll change nothing. Only the truth can set you and everyone else free. Language and Rape Men have been raping, torturing, and killing women since they realized they could. It has nothing to do with evolution or survival or necessity to the continuation of the human species. And any man who tells you that it does is dangerous and you should get the hell away from him before he hurts you. Male control of language has had its greatest impact on the one thing that has allowed them to main, maintain control over women, rape. <clears throat> Without rape and the threat of rape, Men don't have a hold over women, control the language surrounding rape, and you control the crime itself, or whether it is even considered a crime, or who can commit it, or who is responsible, or who can be raped. We know that women have no power and certainly have no control over language because rape is so rampant and that they are on the receiving end with little ability to avoid it or seek justice for it. It is only relatively recently that rape was even considered a crime, and only extremely recently that rape was considered to be a form of torture. In Western cultures, the rape of a woman was considered to be a crime against the man who owned her, and it could be committed by a male who did not own her. She herself, as a rape victim, was deemed filthy, rendered an embarrassment, offered the choice to marry her rapist, or else tossed out like so much garbage from family and community. Even today, rape victims often end up in prostitution or suffering from mental health problems that leave them unable to self-actualize, let alone take care of themselves properly. The propaganda and brainwashing campaign that all societies provide to women to get them to accept rape as reality, as normal, and even as not rape, often succeeds in neutralizing female protest to unlivable conditions. Rape is a crucial part of Western entertainment too. Drama as well as comedy, although Western men are not alone in their enjoyment of female torture. Many women will suppress their experiences or deny that rape even happened. Rape victims who don't follow the rules are often punished by society and frequently by other women who prefer to lash out at other women than to name the real problem. In non-Western countries, rape has gone through equally horrible control by men. In some countries, raping girl, girl children isn't considered rape. Elsewhere, rape cannot occur within marriage or family. In others, rape has only occurred if a woman can get a handful of male witnesses to support her claim. No, women aren't in control of language at all. Anywhere in the world, I mean, no woman would ever set up the linguistic, social, and legal hoops and barriers to proving rape that are currently in place in every corner of the earth, we aren't that masochistic or stupid of our own free will. Men can be raped too. Likely in response to women calling more attention to rape and violence against women, men retaliated. Men always retaliate. They're allowed. They're all, there are always repercussions to women gaining even an ounce of freedom or power, or justice, and language is always at the center of any retaliation, and there is always violence to back it up. So recently, men decided to change the language surrounding rape. They decided that rape no longer meant male forcibly entering a female through her vagina using his dick. Suddenly, males could be raped, and further, women could be rapists. 
these revelations served a very, very important purpose. You see, if you can show that a crime or negative circumstance also affects men, it is no longer a sex-based inequality or a hate crime. Men no longer are forced to be held responsible. Men are no longer predators. They are no longer deficient in some way. If you can show that they suffer too, or that women are doing the same evil deeds too, then men no longer will be examined as the sole source of a major problem or epidemic. Once males can name themselves as victims, all focus can justifiably be removed from women and recentered on men and boys. All we need is one male victim to negate the suffering of millions of women and girls. And all we need is one female predator to negate the predation of millions of males. That is the male control of language at work. Change one word or one definition and you can change the lives of millions. Control is regained. Predictably, women got on board with the rebranding of rape as they usually do when males find new ways to name themselves as victims, to detract from female victims, and to blame women for something. Women are usually the first ones on board with helping men hurt women, and men are experts at painting themselves as victims and martyrs. Rape in the minds of many now also means a woman forces a man to pop a boner and stick it to her. And strangely, rape now also means a dick forcibly entering an anus. But the thing is this, even if the former is forced, it's not rape. It may be a sexual assault, and if so, it needs to have its own label. The latter is not rape. It actually already has its own label. It's called forcible sodomy. Women are also frequently forcibly sodomized by men. More often than men are forcibly sodomized by men. And often in addition to being raped. But ignoring and or broadening existing definitions has achieved its goal. We've taken the focus off what men do to women, and sex crimes are no longer seen primarily as the domain of male perps. Congratulations, men and the dangerous women who support them. Rape is inclusive! Conclusion. Regardless of what is going on, one thing can be said for sure. We need better woman-controlled and woman-defined language concerning different kinds of sexual assault. And we need a complete rethink of the concept of consent as it pertains to an oppressed group of people. We need, we need acknowledgement that there are some crimes that only females experience, rape being a prime example of that. And the reason that these crimes are perpetrated by men and boys against women and girls is both sex-based and sexual in nature, as well as power or violence motivated. We need separate language for different crimes that are dependent on the sex of the victim and the perpetrator. Inclusivity has no place in the language of crime. In the next post, I'll get into the most common and least acknowledged kind of rape, consensual rape, which includes manipulation, coercion, the nagging, giving in game, duty, and pity rape. All of these are otherwise known as sex in the straight world.